good evening, Ernest uh, Hi, from good London. Evening, I am terrific. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I have a question for um, ex Prime Minister uh, Faustin. Yes. Uh, sorry, I can't say the name. Uh, the surname is a little bit uh, daunting for me to pronounce, <coughs> but never mind. I'm Nigerian originally. Mm -hmm. um, but before the question, let me quickly mention them um, how sad it is to not being, not having um, Patrice Lumumba around. I mean, my senior brother served in the United Peacekeeping Force mm -hmm. uh, when they had that problem, and. Um, he spoke so glowingly about Patrice Lumumba, only that he had not power in any way to ensure that uh, Patrice was um, um, defended from that, um, uh, those people who murdered him. It's so sad. Yeah, now my question for uh, ex-Prime Minister Faustin yes. is that he kept referring to Paul Kagame as um, a dictator, a, a, a replacement of Habri Yamana. Fair enough, but... Doesn't he acknowledge that sometimes you do need some benevolent dictators, dictatorship to stabilize a country? Imagine how much um, stability Paul Kagame has mm. brought into um, Rwanda from mm. that whole you know, genocide. I spoke to a few Rwandese in London, and they do not want to be spoken and to be referred to as either Hutu or Tutsi. Shouldn't that be that kind of... Um, what we should be uh, uh, celebrating in Africa, uh, a, 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 a kind of benevolent dictator that um, <laughs> kind of suppresses uh, things that divides us, you know, you know, not people who deepen existing cleavages, say you are Hutu, you are Yoruba, you are Igbo, you are Hausa, you know, that kind of a situation that we have in Nigeria. Um, doesn't he acknowledge that some good in terms of stability has come from mm. Kagame governor? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ernest. What about that, uh, Mr. Twajira Mungu? Well, uh, I think our friend in London is, uh, is wrong because he doesn't have much information about Rwanda. What he hears is propaganda from uh, Kagame and uh, his ambassadors uh, in the different countries. 90% of the officers in the army are Tutsis, for that matter. I did not want to go into this uh, differentiation of Hutus and Tutsis. But that from what Kagame my business. says, they are not Tutsis, they are Rwandese. This is a lie. Yes, to make it believed that it's good, uh, he doesn't want to accept that uh, the evidence that the Hutus and Tutsis are still there. They should be there this will not prevent us to go into process of a democratic uh, realization. Uh, Professor Ite, what is the difference between uh, a benevolent dictator and a merchant of illusion? No, yeah. <laughs> there, there's no difference between it. Well, look, you know, as far as I'm concerned, there's no such thing as a benevolent dictator. The only good dictator is a dead one. Look, you know, but there are a lot of people. There are a lot of dictator. people on the African continent who say, "Yes, the man may be very harsh, may be very strong." Uh, in Uganda, for example, they say, "Twebaka <laughs> tulo." In other words, we can sleep peacefully. Look, no dictator has brought lasting prosperity to any African country. The closest that you might say was a benevolent dictator was Felix Hufuwanyi of Ivory Coast. But look, Ivory Coast imploded in 2000, 2005, and also 2011. Let's stop this, you know, adulation of uh, benevolent dictators because you know, dictatorship, okay, does not inhere in the African tradition. Let's walk uh, to other other countries which are outside of the African continent. Let's go to Singapore. Let's talk a bit about uh, the 31 years uh, that. Uh, were <coughs> under the leadership of somebody, frankly, that would fit a bit of that description, well, Lee Kuan Yew, <coughs> well, look, but in <coughs> fact developed Singapore from a poor third world country for, for, to for, for, a worth <coughs> wait a minute. modern nation state. Wait a minute. Okay, look, the Asian Tiger model would never, never work in Africa. It won't work in Africa because, you know, the circumstances in Africa are different. 
Look, too much borrowing from abroad has also ruined Africa. Look, first of all, the Asian tigers, they are insular. Okay, many of them are small islands. Okay, so if you're fed up with the dictatorship, there's nowhere you can go. You have to stay in there. Number two, the Asian tigers, you know, are ethnically homogeneous. Okay, no, uh, not, here, not no, really no, look at Nigeria. Nigeria Indians, has, and Nigeria you have has Mali, 200 you have and Chinese. No, no, no. In Nigeria alone, you have 250. Okay, ethnic groups. You don't have that number in uh, in Asia. Number three, the Asian tigers face an external communist threat. African countries don't face that kind of threat. So because of that threat, uh, the Western countries poured a lot of billions of aid into, uh, into the Asian tigers. And also, we have to recognize the fact that, look, you know, bo the borders in Africa are porous. If people don't like a dictatorship, they vote with their feet and go and settle somewhere else. Why, look, can't, why can't Africans also either vote with their feet or reject the tag they, they of already, being willing victims. No, they're already voting with their feet. Africa is crawling with refugees. Look at Tanzania, for example. Uh, look at uh, Congo. Many of the Hutu refugees went there. Hutus went there. In Tanzania, also went there. Uganda? Africans, well, Africans are always voting with their feet. Uganda if they are fed up with the dictatorship, they will leave.